Jeremy. Welcome, trainers, uh, <laughs> to the first PBF podcast of the season. Uh, I'm Mike Mealy. With me, as always, Jeremy Temple. Hi. And uh, Seth Graham, who today will be played by the rosters page. I have transformed into a piece of paper. Digital paper. Uh, which will be very useful for us since we will be going over the draft results tonight. Uh, we're going to drop this on, we're recording and dropping it on a Tuesday. Uh, you'll also see the first game of the week up. Uh, no spoilers, Jeremy. Uh, but we're going to drop them together and hopefully we'll get a lot more games of the week this season. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is... I'm, this is I'm, oh, go I'm ahead. I'm currently watching Silver Dial, and my name's Black. I duke it out, so it'll be interesting to see how that one goes. <laughs> uh, how's it? How's it so far? Uh, it's literally just starting. I'll, yeah. I'll why, just... Is, why is Bla is Black just is, like doing his games now? I mean, like I haven't done mine yet, but is he just <laughs> happens to be doing them right now? Yeah. Oh, neat. Nice. nice. <laughs> Game of the week, at Jace. Well, um, Black messaged me and goes, "Hey." What does Lucario do? Great so start. I was like, I was like, why? He's like, I'm battling Richard, and I said, okay. Um, so. <laughs> All right. I, I, I was like, I was like, oh, send me the link when you start. <laughs> so, so this is uh, this is usually the part of the podcast where we go over the new rules for the season, what's different, and really not much has changed. Except uh, we had a uh, crowdsource rule uh, from Melissa Arnold, so thanks, Melissa. Uh, as everybody noticed, we drafted Megas. Nor well, we drafted people or every Pokemon normally, and Mega Stones can now be taken on or off. Uh, Jeremy, what what about the Melissa suggestion made you think it was a good idea? Oh, uh, we didn't have to deal with Megas. Yes. No, yeah. dra no drafting of Megas, nobody feeling yeah. shafted because they did not get a decent Mega. Yeah, there yeah. never really was a good way to, to handle Megas. Yeah. Right. I mean, my argument, my argument for the way we did it in the past was that all you could, you could find a useful like, role for any Mega, but I mean, there were clearly some that just had a bigger impact than others, so now it's, right. now it's more like, well... If you don't like your Mega, you should have drafted somebody who with a better Mega. So, And it is now sort of closer to our original intention of uh, no repeat Pokemon in the league. Yes. Uh, except for Charizard. So that's 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 neat. neat. Uh, so yeah, everything else is pretty much the same. So let's get to the draft results. Uh, everybody's favorite part of the early season when Jeremy and Seth pick apart their teams. Woo-woo! Uh, we'll start, we'll keep these short, uh, we'll start with the roster page himself. Uh, <laughs> Seth, uh, real quick, what are your thoughts about Raz and Shuri John's draft? Okay, I just wanted to make sure we were starting at the top in draft order. Yes. Um, first pick, Talon well. Flame, first pick Talon Flame. I don't think was much of a shock to me after I went back and looked at everybody's, like, I, I, I looked at, I took, like, a quick glance at everybody's team, but I looked at mostly the, uh, the first picks, just because those were kind of really interesting. But um, he's got a lot of offense, um, but I'm not sure how I like the t like his tank situation. Swampert can be very good um, in a lot of situations, um, but he's like crazy weak to grass, and uh, um, I don't know if he'll use like Probo Pass or maybe like uh, I mean I guess even that Executor can kind of that could complement Swampert very well. But I love the offense on his team. Like I love Verloom, I love Talonflame, I love like a Scarf Pory Porygon Z, and then Cloyster just always has the chance to do to sweep with like a Shell Smash. So really like the offense on his team. Now, Jeremy, we all know that you love walls. Uh, could you see Probo Pass being a real wall in this league? Nope. Um, and I, I, I mean, it's just I, I just don't think Rubipass has the tools to. There's to, too many uh, fighting moves. Like, there's too many like close right. combat threats right. and like drain punches and mock punches. Like, and, right. And and I mean, it's it's. I guess it sort of frees him up a little bit because he doesn't have to worry. What, what are we beeping? What's beeping? That was my timer. 
That was the that was the ninety seconds. Oh, time's up. All right, guys. Thanks for uh, <laughs> thanks for playing. You know, I'm just uh, saying. I mean, I did not know that that would happen. <laughs> I I do like I do like Swampert as a wall, but it's his only Mega option, so he's probably going to run him as a Mega. However, I don't think Mega Swampert works on this team because Mega Swampert's only really good in the rain, and Talonflame doesn't like the rain. Cloyster, I guess, he tends to, and he tends to go more offensive when he's in the rain too, because he gets the speed. Right, so. right. But I do like Swampert as a wall for this team. Swampert's biggest weakness: grass. Talonflame doesn't care about grass. Breloom doesn't care about grass. I think if he runs Swampert as a wall, he'll be in pretty good shape. Cool. All uh, right. Uh, let's go to the Bradford Breloom's. Uh, Jeremy, thoughts yeah. on thoughts on John Vox? No, I, I really I really like this team. I mean, you have the solid core of Venusaur and Rotom Wash. There's a lot that those two can do. Their types complement each other. Uh, I mean, that you, you don't really have a common weakness there that you have to worry about at all. Um, and, and, I mean, you have Klefki in there just to sort of throw around some support. And if you can get Klefki to set up some spikes, maybe paralyze a few people, that just makes Rotom and Venusaur's job of wearing people down so much easier that you don't even really need a big sweeper to come in. And considering his biggest sweepers are probably going to be Arcanine and Crawdon, to, you know, you don't really expect to see those two around for that long in the early game. But, they you know, if you save them for the late game, obviously they can clean up. And I think they're in pretty good shape. I mean... I could see this team just wearing people down with Venusaur and Rotom Wash, and then Arcanine just comes in and picks everything off with extreme speed that it doesn't outspeed. So I like that team a lot. Uh, Seth, do you think he could have gotten Venusaur to later round? I mean, he's it's a it's not a bad pick at number <coughs> one or number two overall because of the versatility that he gives you playables and Mega and non Mega in this league. Uh, yeah. But do you think you could have got him in the I, end I think, of two, the very end of two? I think for sure. Um... I will say he was lucky enough to pick up Rotom Wash on the back end, so like that, yeah. like Rotom Wash to me is easily a number one pick. So right, so I mean, if, the if fact his, that that fell that low, I think he his first he made two picks time. were reversed. If his yeah. first two picks were reversed, we wouldn't even be having this conversation. No, I think Venusaur is fine as a as a yeah. as a top pick. I mean, yeah. um, the only weakness Venusaur really has is Psychic, and how often do you see Psychic? Exactly, and that can get covered by like Gudra, Arcanine, like you know. He's he's got ways to protect that to protect that core and I mean that core is tanky enough as it is by themselves so but I I mean I just like and um I don't know why but um I really like and you and you see the success a lot people that draft like Amungus in the PBF like <laughs> I don't know why but Amungus does really well like Drew's had Amungus like two three times I think and I mean not Drew's a good battler but um like that, that Pokemon does Amungus. really well. Right, I do think Amoongus is kind of redundant on this team. However, yeah, um, he covers with the, the Venusaur. He does the same niche that like Venusaur does. But but at the same time, he takes him away from somebody else, and that's that's you know that's just as yep. valid in a draft as anything else. Yep. Um, I will. I think I would have liked to see that sixth pick be for some sort of sweeper. Although I mean, in the sixth round, the big sweepers were gone. I'm just seeing who else was available in the sixth pick. I don't know if the six was on the back end or the front end. It doesn't yeah, matter. Yeah, he doesn't. He doesn't have much in the way of a speedy sweeper. I mean, right. you could scarf. Like, there's no sense in scarfing like a Gudra or like a Crawdon. Maybe an Arcanine, but I think you waste like the the versatility of Arcanine that way. So I don't really see a true scarf. Right. From Unless he puts right. it on I mean, in the sixth round, he could have picked up. I'm just looking here who he could have grabbed as a sweeper. I mean, Salamence was available. Um, Chow. I mean, not not great, but High Dragon. Yeah. But that Axorus. being said, that team, his team is is fairly well balanced. Right. Uh, you no, know, you can you can win games without having one crazy offensive like mega. Offensive oh yeah. Threat. yeah. I mean, you have a team that wears people down like this one. I mean, I think, yeah. I think he's in pretty good shape. Exactly. I agree. Uh, now the next one, I'm gonna double up on Seth here. Yep. Uh, Seth, this is your team, but you did not draft it. So tell me what you think of Jeremy's job drafting your team. No, I think he did great. I mean, he knows um, he knows how I battle, and this is exactly like I saw my first. I actually, so I like I could have hopped in late on the draft, but he was doing great, and I was kind of actually busy doing something else. I just lost the cap to my bottle, but whatever. Um, but no, like I love this team, and. I, I ran this team. I actually put a team together out of this group and took it to Showdown and won, like, eight straight battles in a row. 
And I was like, all right, I think I can deal with this. <laughs> like, <laughs> so I love it. I mean, it's just, it's hyper offensive for the most part. I mean, four out of the first five picks are all like insanely strong in their own way. So, um, yeah. And the typing, the typings go well together. So I'm cool with it. Jeremy, real quick, uh, the pick that you were most nervous that Seth wouldn't like. Are you picking? I don't know. Maybe not for Seth, but I'm gonna do it anyway. I mean, none of them. I mean, I feel all of his picks are, I think, fine. I mean, obviously the tenth pick is Lantern, but that was just like who the heck's, like, he's never gonna use the tenth. <laughs> no, pick anyway. I was gonna say by so, nine, by honestly, even by like eight, nine, ten, and I actually love Lopunny at eight. So yeah, I mean, Lopunny's a really, really good mega. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, Agron's a good mega. I mean, I, I, I don't see him using mega Agron. But, I, I mean, he could, because, like, Mega Scizor isn't... I mean, just because you have Scizor doesn't mean you're bringing Mega Scizor. Exactly. Um, and so, I mean, I think... I think uh, they, I just think Vaporeon is the perfect Pokemon for the team. Obviously, I think Slowbro would be better on his team, but I have Slowbro. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And, and um, I've had Vaporeon. I believe I had Vaporeon... I definitely had Vaporeon in one of the seasons. And, yeah. Uh, and it worked out well just, for me. Yeah. Just, like, a water wall going with Scizor just works. I yeah, mean, right. I don't know. Yeah, and that's the thing. Like, you you bring in Scizor to do massive amounts of damage. They switch in a counter, and then you just put in Vaporeon to say, uh-uh. Right. I mean, his team is a little bit afraid of fighting types. Yes. But <laughs> but his his whole team sort of is offensive. So, I mean, he's trying to outspeed or at least outpunch the fighting types here. So Let's do it, baby. Yeah, that's sort of just sort of the, the credo you're gonna have to work with here is just you know <laughs> hit harder than the fighting types because you're not gonna be able to resist them. <laughs> uh, now, Jeremy, you've already battled the next team, uh, Magic yeah. Carpet Ride with Andrew on it. Yeah, I mean it's sort of he's sort of either gonna live or die by the same strategy, which is just attacking with Pinsir. I, I think he goes to set up with Pinsir, and I, that's I mean that's re- you're either gonna be able to cover it or you're not. Yeah, I, I had the fortune of drafting Rhyperior, who <laughs> doesn't care about a boosted pincer. Not at all. Yes. Um, you know, Peasley, you faced him as well. I don't think you had anyone who could do that. Uh, I really no, I could have. I might have been able to do it with Don Fan, but I misplayed him. Well, uh, and and I just like to speak from experience because season one, I may have, I may have run. Right. And, Right, a, and, a, and pincer, a pincer based team that had I great had, success. And I had the same Rhyperior for Nohawk in that season. Exactly. <laughs> he was like my only counter. Like I think yeah. I lost both my games to Jeremy, and like maybe yep. one other random one. I think Rhyperior is one of the most underrated Pokemon in the game because he counters two of the biggest threats, at least in like the PBF and OU, are Mega Pincer and Talonflame. They can't touch him. There's nothing yeah. I can do. Yeah. And then he can set up hazards or do whatever he wants to keep them from ever coming back in. Exactly, and I mean, yeah, you can't take special attacks, but that's why you have Blissey, you know, so. <laughs> um, Seth, int- I want to I wanna ask you about something. Yeah. So I th- I'm pretty sure every season Andrew's drafted Scolipede, there might have been one where he didn't. I, every I season personally... Definitely drafted. Yeah. Now, now yeah, Scolipede, sorry. whether he's good or not, is, you know, personal uh, interest, but... What do you think is the trade-off between drafting Scolipede for the tenth time and everybody knowing that you're gonna what you're gonna do with Scolipede versus having him to fall back on? You know what you you know that you're good with him. You know that you like the strategy with him. Uh, what's the what do you think about that familiarity versus predictability thing? Yeah, I I think with the familiarity, I think it it slightly outweighs predictability. Um, just because you know what somebody's gonna do doesn't mean you your team is fit to stop it. Now, some people are going to have, like, a really easy counter to that where they have, you know, they can they can take Scolipede down to a sash and then they have a priority ability to kill him. Like, like some some teams are just going to have that. But um, I personally don't like Scolipede myself because I think he gets, like, one layer of spikes out and then just gets rocked or, and tries a baton pass. But, I mean, generally you know what he's going to baton pass to, so... Um, yeah, I mean, I think I think the problem is that in this league, regardless of how good you are with Scolipede, regardless of how well your team complements Scolipede, everyone knows you have Scolipede. I was going to battle. I was actually going to bed, and and Andrew said, "Come on, battle." I think he called me a pansy or something. So I decided <laughs> not battle. I had to put a team together on my laptop real quick. I didn't really. I mean, I, I looked at his roster a little bit, 
But even in the back of my mind, I was like, I knew he had Scolipede, so I knew I had to bring something to counter Scolipede. Whereas if this was a game where we had no team preview, no roster page, if we didn't know he had Scolipede, I wouldn't, you know, set out a lead specifically yeah, to no, you, sort of yeah, look out you for know, Scolipede. Yeah, because you know that's when it's going to Like, they're, yeah. they're going to lead with it because there's really... Because so many hazards get set up in this game now that, like, you can't bring Scolipede in on rocks because then that takes a sash and then he's no no good and then... right. You, he gets one shot by like a lot of things, so you just have to be very careful. So you pretty much know you're gonna get it first. But I mean, yeah, my I mean, strategy with with a team like that was like when I had Mega Pinsir, my five other guys were all fodder, and they were just meant to do as much damage as they could so that Pinsir could come in and sweep. Like that was literally right. the, the only purpose of the other five. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, I think it's the same situation for. Um... Uh, Richard's team with Ninjas, which I will have an update on that game when we get the black as black as team. Nice, um, nice. He has Ninjas, and I mean Ninjas, I think is great whenever you can set him up. But I just don't see how he's going to be able to set him up in this league because everybody is going to be looking out for Ninjas. Whereas yeah. otherwise, you know, if you're not looking out for Baton Pass, he can catch you off guard. Yeah, but in it's hard league, to I, get. It's hard to get, and I, and for lack of a better word, I call them like gimmicky like, strategies. Yeah. Like, it's hard mm-hmm. to get those going because just by nature of the Pokemon you have to bring to do them, it's very obvious. Whereas if you're... Would... Yeah, whereas if you're doing, like, a random battle in, like, Showdown and somebody brings it, you're like, ah, oh, fuck. Like, <laughs> right, exactly. Which is why we don't see weather teams in the PBF after the first season. Exactly. Uh, who are we on? I think Seth. No, no, uh, we're on... We're on, we're on to Pingle. No, I mean, whose turn is it to start? I think... Oh, does, it does it matter? Does it matter? It doesn't. It, you gotta be... Uniform okay. right, Jeremy. Can, mm-hmm. All right, Pingle, Seth, talk about him. Uh, I just want to point out seven, eight, nine picks, an amazing array of names, some of the best names in Pokemon. Kafagrigus, the one that no one can say, and Mianchao. <laughs> yeah, which I didn't know Mianchao was called Mianchao until, uh, yep. like, last year. No, uh, um, so, so, I like a lot of these picks. The Excadrill is an interesting pick because I, I, I love Excadrill, but he... He just wants to be in the sand, um, and he and there can be a tough. It can be tough to find a use for him when he's not. Um, but I mean, Excadrill is super strong no matter what. So if he gets off like a couple earthquakes or some rock slides, like if he's gonna do a ton of damage to something. Um, love Gyarados, love Togekiss. Um, I actually really like Porygon too as a wall, but there, I will say a lot more Pokemon can run knockoff nowadays, so that. He'll have to be a little bit careful about. Um, I'm interested to see what he'll do. Porygon 2 normally goes... <clears throat> Jeremy, does Porygon 2 normally go like physical or special wall? I think you can do either. I think it's special, yeah. but I'm not I sure. S- I see him leaning that more towards physical with having a Togekiss, but I mean, he can Togekiss can go offense, defense, yeah. whatever. So he's got some versatility there. And then Galvantula is just annoying as shit. Setting yeah. up a sticky web, so I'm gonna I'm gonna disagree with Nohawk a little here with the extra drill Ooh. pick because I actually I think that was my favorite pick of Pingle's team. I mean, obviously Gyarados Togekiss are great picks, but whenever you see Gyarados and Togekiss on the same team, you're thinking I need to bring someone with electric, yeah. which you know gives Excadrill all the chance in the world to come in. And I mean, sand or no sand, I think Excadrill is pretty scary even with a. I mean, I've seen Sword Stand sets, which. Not fantastic, but I think Choice Scarf Extra Drill is very scary. Yep. And it, it, I mean, if it can come in, it has such a, uh, it has a pretty wide move pool that I think anything you're gonna bring in on it is now gonna get, now, gonna get think, hit. But to counter that, do you think that poses an issue that pretty much if 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 you bring in a threat to Gyarados or Togekiss, like you can pretty much guarantee he's gonna bring an Extra Drill? Like, does that? Yeah, I mean, does he does have Porygon too? Yeah. To sort of take anything else, but I mean, I, I think it gives Pingle another option, and if he can keep people guessing, you know, is he going to bring in Porygon 2, or is he going to bring in Excadrill? Yeah. If you guess wrong, and you're stuck in there with a Choice Scarf, uh, you know, oh, Excadrill. Something, yeah, something's getting rocked, yeah. Right, right. I agree. So, yeah, no, I agree. So, and same thing with Salamence. I mean, Salamence doesn't do great with, you know, electricity, but at least he's neutral to it. Yep. And, I mean, I think I, think I see Salamence more of sort of the revenge killer of this team. Yeah. Unless Pingle, unless Pingle does the choice scarf Togekiss, which I know he likes and I personally love, um, but if he's looking for something more of a special wall, he does have Togekiss to use as a yeah. special wall. Well, and, and, goes, and, yeah. And, and he just, he took Galvantula, which is one of the biggest. I was gonna say one, that. yeah, one last point would be that Sticky Web can help all of these guys who have speed issues. Like Gyarados, Gyarados is fast and obviously can Dragon Dance, but like Togekiss loves mm-hmm. 
like slow like yeah. slows and uh, like thunder waves just to be able to to get that flinch off or just go first. Um, so that he a lot of his guys can benefit from the sticky web if he gets it down. So yeah. All right, Jeremy, let's get that update. Yeah. So Blacka defeated uh, Silver Dial four wow. in a four game out. that four wow. out. I mean, I, there were Blacka had a lot of crits. I don't know if any of them mattered. I'm not saying they did. I'm not saying they didn't. <laughs> you could you could go. He just had a lot of crits. That's all I'm saying. Uh, you could you could go back and look at the replay. They're on the schedule. Uh, you can do the statistics yourself. It doesn't matter. But the um, okay, if you had to guess, looking at that list, who is the MVP of Blackest team? Uh, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go Nito King. I'll say Tentacruel. Tentacruel did not even come out. And Nito <laughs> King. And Nito King died. Uh The MVP Scarmory. was Haxorus. Oh. Yeah, I loved Haxorus season one. Haxorus was my boy. Yeah. So, so I hear that. Always a great pick. I think that is one of the strengths of Blackest team, and I, I purposely asked that question that way because when you see his roster, you see Lucario, you see Alakazam, Skarmory, yeah. Tentacruel, Hydreigon. You know, honestly, yeah. Yeah. How are you going to cover those guys? And then you see Haxorus, who always slips late in this draft because he, I think he's UU, but he, he, he Black a Dragon danced him and just went to town. Nice. I mean, it, a great play. Right, and like. You know, I mean, Richard, he, he's very good. But, like, I, I would not blame him if he did not, you know, take Haxorus into account for his game plan. Nice. Because when you have, you know, when you have someone like Lucario on your team... Well, I think it's I think it's Haxorus's, like, I don't know if it's his typing or his move pool. Like, he's is he just... He's just Dragon, correct? He's just Dragon, yeah. and I think yeah. that might I be I think with. it's that, and, like... You need to scarf him. There's not much besides yeah, scarfing him. We'll see Black didn't scarf him, though, and that Ooh. might be what, what Richard was, was, you know, assuming, because what happened was he, Richard... Did he try to, like, switch somebody in to Haxorus, and then Black got, like, a free Dragon Dance? So, so let, me, let me try and recollect here. I think it started out where Nito King took an overheat from Rotom Heat and Rotom so Heat he, was scarfed. So he comes mm-hmm. in on a on a Pokemon yeah. with minus two special attack who can't right. Yeah. Right. And so he was able to get that. And then he was able to land a crit earthquake on on um Aegislash. So Aegislash wasn't even a factor. <laughs> Still and super was, effective though. Right, it's super with effective. It, I mean, with it, Flash it, has a ton. Yeah, and I mean, Haxorus is a tax set. You know what? I'm actually going. To, I'm going to run that. I'm just the, gonna... the the part you find out that where it matters is could could the damage that Aegislash Slash could have returned to Haxorus mattered later. Right. I mean, I'm assuming. Died it, I'm assuming what was, yeah. I mean, I'm assuming what was happening was going to be a a um, sword dance followed sword dance, by a uh, shadow sneak. Yeah, that's what I'm assuming was coming in. Obviously, I can't do a, uh, I can't do a perfect calc here because I don't know exactly what the sets were. Yeah, we're gonna assume it was a this one. <laughs> um, so earthquake. So this is Aegis Slash Shield, not boosted at all. Earthquake kills. Let's give him max defense. No, this isn't right. See, the problem with this is it doesn't take into account the the shield form. I will be back in literally 10 seconds, sorry. Oh, no, no, here we go. Okay. All right. So let's assume he had max defense, which I wouldn't expect him to have, but it's possible. So we have a plus one Haxorus with an earthquake. That still does 85 to 101%. So, that is what you're dealing with. And Haxorus is pretty much glass, so right. Anything that, boosted from Age Slash. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't check that, but I mean, we'll, we'll, we'll check it. Let's. Oh wait, no, no, he was Life Orb too. I didn't take. Oh no, Life um, Orb is. Okay, hold on. Life Orb is on here. Life Orb is on here. If he's mm-hmm. Jolly, it does 77 to 91 percent. And I, I mean, you know, like this is obviously a lot of speculation. Whatever. But I'm just, regardless of what these stats are. That is a ton of damage coming from a seventh round pick. Yeah. So, and I mean, we could talk for days about, you know, the core of Skarmory and Tentacruel, which obviously has to worry about electricity, and the only thing Black has to counter that is Nidoking. Um, Black has a very similar team to what I did. 
uh, first season. Yeah. Assets, Skarmory, Tentacruel, Haxorus. Actually, yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. So, I mean, I think I think Blacka is scary. Um, if he can figure out how to use all of his guys without having to message me on Facebook and say, what does Lucario do? Um, <laughs> yeah. I think, he'll be, I think he'll be in okay shape, but we'll see. Uh, no, Hawk, real quick. Shoot. Wait, how many more Michael, of these are we doing? Uh, are we going to do all of them? Yeah, can we, like, pick it up? Yeah. All right, all right. cool. Um, do you want me to put the timer back on? No, it's but we can just, like, not talk so long about, like, people's teams like Peasley's and Gordon's. I mean, we yeah. can talk about it, but, like, okay. Keep going. Uh, Let's go. Rock and roll. There we go. Seth, Pittsburgh yeah. Porygons. Oh, shit. My page is not... Um... Love Mega Sableye. Well, I don't love him. I think he's the most annoying thing in the whole planet. <laughs> um, Gordon, I guess, has some sort of affinity for Hapowdon as well. Yeah, he fucking loves Hapowdon. I, I, I don't... I, that's, like, that's the pick that I'm not too sure about. Uh, my, my pick is number four, Slow King. Yes. I don't see how you do Slow King in the fourth round whenever Tentacruel was available, Porygon 2... Are you not wondering like, about Pangoro getting drafted, period, as well? I think Pangoro is pretty good. You, you still have a choice scarf on Pangoro. He's scary. <laughs> Jeremy, choice scarf. Yeah. Everybody. But no, I mean, I really like the core of Sableye and Metagross. Um, yeah. I think, yeah. I think, I mean, Sableye's only weakness is fairy. Metagross doesn't care about fairy. will destroy it. Um, yep. You know, Sableye burning things. I will Metagross say, destroys I, I, it. I swear to God, if he, if he brings Whimsicott and Sableye, I'm just going to forfeit. <laughs> Oh, he right. will. Yeah. I'm not he even going to... That's, because that's like 90 minutes. That's yeah. going yeah. to take an hour to battle him. Yeah. The, the, the problem with Gordon's team is he needs to have the, the cojones to do the War of Attrition, to wear people down with Sableye, Slow King, Whimsicott, you know? And then he really only has Metagross as the guy that really stands out on the list. It's like, oh, crap, you know? Yeah, like a damage-dealing threat. Yeah, I mean, well, Roserade, guess... Roserade can be scary, but I yeah. mean, it's, not, it's not a Metagross. Yep. You bring up the War of Attrition, Jeremy. We can close on him on this little note, uh, just so you, Seth, and everybody else knows. Uh, there was a time when me, uh, Brett, and Jeremy were very much into playing Yu-Gi-Oh! And mm -hmm. uh, Brett's favorite deck was designed to make the two make you and your opponent tie by both of you running out of cards. <laughs> so that tells you all you need to know about how Brett's going to use this team. Goddamn troll. Yeah. Uh, Mighty Sidex of Anaheim. You don't need to. Yeah, I mean, I mean, no, no. I, 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 I think you, you sort of took my. I mean, I always tell you that I like walls and I draft walls first, but I don't think you take three walls in the first four rounds. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I, I'm sure you. I'm sure you will use Sylveon at times as a special sweeper. Yeah, that's almost exclusive. But, I mean, I, I love Sylveon as a special wall. I mean, obviously not my favorite special wall. But, um, I don't know. I mean, you don't really, aside from Charizard X, who really needs a Dragon Dance to you know, yeah. really do damage, Yeah. you don't have anyone too scary from the offensive side. I mean, Sylveon, Haunch yeah, but Sylveon is slow as balls. Well, and Haunchgrown, he, Haunchgrown needs Moxie, and Heliolisk, his move pools is pretty shit, so... yeah. So I mean, if you if you were to actually play this team with Sylveon as a special wall, Lipard with Thunder Wave, I think it gets Thunder Wave. It has to get Thunder. Wave. Oh, it has it does. Thunder Wave, Swagger, Foul Play, bullshit. Yeah, yeah. So if you were to paralyze some things, you don't have these walls that are really. I mean, you have Melodic who has Recover, but I really think if you would sort of play it a defensive strategy with this team and save Charizard and Honchkrow to come sweep. I think you'd be okay. Yeah. I, I don't I don't love Sylveon as a special sweeper in general, but I don't love it on this team because I think you need its bulk. But I think Sylveon and Melodic together can be pretty scary. Do some recovers and maybe pass some wishes. Yeah. What I really need is a practice draft because I always think of huh. great should have could have would have after the draft. Right. And just can't. I know. I'm not a crocodile. Seth. Take yeah. It. Oh. Jeremy, did you want to? You said you enthusiastically sure. said yeah. <laughs> well, I, I'm just, I was just pumped about moving on. Um, um, I think we should note. I don't think this was mixed draft. I think 
It wasn't Drew no, drafting this yeah, one? Yeah, Drew drafted, and I think yeah. Luke was pretty happy about it, I think. Uh, I mean, you have, right off the bat, two huge special sweepers in Charizard Y and Gengar. Uh, and then Chansey, who is super Wally. And then I think where, where Drew got a little odd here was picking yeah. a fourth special, or a third special sweeper. Yeah. Before getting a physical sweeper, I think uh, yeah, there Mick had would have been, been a little, better alternative. I think Mick would have been a lot happier here with a physical sweeper, and I'm just seeing who's who was probably available. I would have been a hell of a lot happier because he stole Magnezone right off my, right in front of my goddamn face. Well, what? I think so. What, my favorite pick is at number eight. Browgator with uh, yeah, no, that's a, that's a good pick in the end, and I mean, it, it's it's you. I do like to see whenever an eighth round pick sort of is going to be on the core six, I think. I think he should, yeah. And But the only other problem is none of the bottom picks were used as any sort of walls. So, I mean, I think no. Chansey is your special wall. Hit him on top needs to just sort of intimidate and pretend to be a physical wall. I was going to say he can kind of serve that role, but not right. fantastically. Right. But, I mean, I think the top end of the team, Charizard Y, Gengar... You have two mega options there. You can mix it up. I mean, obviously, probably not going to use Charizard normally. Yeah. But you never know if you're getting Gengar normal, if you're, if you're getting you know Mega Gengar. You could do Mega Beedrill. You know, there's nothing wrong with Mega Beedrill. I will say Charizard Y kind of contradicts, um, like, for Alligator's damage. It'll beef up any damage to, like, Magnezone. Yeah. Um, so I, I, I mean, I don't know how you... I would right. never, Char I would yeah, never draft, so I don't know. It's tough It's tough when you take Charizard Y because you want to take stuff that benefits from the sun, but you don't want a sun team. Like, yeah. it, it, it's tough. And there's not too many things that do benefit from the sun. So, no. But, uh, I mean, I, I think he, he does have the offensive power. He's just going to have to sort of figure out how he wants to wield it. Yeah, distribute it. Yeah. Seth, since uh, Jeremy really wanted to do Mick, uh, why don't you take Richard... And uh, what tell us about Silver Dial? Okay, um, I think Aegislash was a really good pick. I'm kind of surprised <laughs> it fell. <laughs> you said it was the worst. No, 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 no. Oh, <laughs> no. I think I think Aegislash is always a good pick. I mean, yeah. It, I am I am shocked that Aegislash and Greninja fell that far down the line. Whenever people I will were say, taking... I will say, and I think I think. He kind of did the same thing that we just talked about, where he took three physical, like, heavy physical damage dealers before even touching. Now, Aegislash is very... Gar Garchomp can go Wally. -E. Um, Aegislash, by nature, can do some defensive things. Metachamp's kind of all out. Um, but then he instantly, like, I don't know if he realized it, or I don't know if, like, he just wanted to take strong strong picks because they were open, but, like... You could see he was trying to compensate by with the four, five, yeah. six picks. Like, yeah. I, mean, I love I love Florgus and Tangrowth, two of my yeah. favorite walls. And they but... complement Garchomp well. Oh yeah, uh, yeah. So yeah, I think I think what I think the only flaw with the draft strategy because I think the bottom of Rotom H, Clotzer, and Reuniclus is great. Yes. And, yes. and Richard is good enough to use Zora correctly. Same. Um, right. I think he, I he was kind of going for comfort with Metacham in the third pick. Yeah. I don't think he needed to take Metacham there. I think he would have been better served to try and get, you know, a better physical wall. Yeah. But at the same time, like, Tangrowth is good. Yes. So but he's, it's very, and it's very, I mean, I think it's pretty obvious he, he'll, like, it's Mega Metacham and then just a standard Garchomp, because Garchomp right. doesn't need the Mega to do right. damage. Yeah. Um, but no, I completely agree with, like, everything you said. He, he, and he's, and like we say, he's good enough where he can make all of these picks like, work. Like, they're all very versatile. Aegislash, yeah. Garchomp, Florges, right. like, Tango, yeah. they're, like, the Rotom H, especially, like, he'll be, he'll make it work. Mm -hmm. uh, Jeremy, before we get di deep dive into Amphrosomeness and Joe's team, deep I, dive. Just wanna, I just want to shout out Joe for taking Zeb Stryka, which I think might be a first <laughs> in PBF history. Yeah, I mean, you know... Whenever you commit to a strategy of taking zero walls, I think you just go all out. <laughs> yeah, you know, why, why, <laughs> why take, like, a trash one at the end? I will tell you this, though. Joe's going to have a tough time. I think he beat Gordon, but that's not really saying much. But <laughs> his team depends really heavily on setting up. Volcarona Quiver Dances. Scrafty, dra I mean, dra doesn't have to Dragon Dance, but it usually yeah, does. Pretty much does, yeah. 
Slurpuff belly drums, Tyrantrum dragon dances, but then you have the Seraptor, Noivern, and Greninja, who are all incredibly fast. And, and Espeon and Bounce stuff. Right, Espeon, I think Espeon is the key to his team. I mean, that's probably why he beat Gordon, honestly, because what is a, you know, what is Gordon's tricky, annoying team going to do against an Espeon that just bounces Exactly. Everything? But so my, th- my only concern is the lack of... He's got the physical damage with Scrafty, Tyrantrum, Toxicroak. To me, like, they're all slow as slow as hell. Right, I mean, and Staraptor's can get, up there. can get but... one shot. Yeah, Staraptor. To me, I think he should utilize Staraptor's speed. Staraptor can be a pain. Like, it can, it can kill a lot of things. Um, yeah. And brings the speed as well. Honestly, that, that's got to be a strategy. Like, Greninja and Espeon, make them fast as shit. They, they've got pretty good type coverage. Greninja has really good type coverage. Um, yeah. And just, I, yeah, just throw the kitchen sink at them. Yeah, I think this team is, I think it's bad on paper. <laughs> a, 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 collectively. I think right. individually. It, oh, well, the ba- yeah, the balance is terrible, but. Right, yeah, but like, this, I think this could also be that, terrifying. If, if you play carefully with this team, I think it could absolutely destroy people. Oh, yeah. Because you have so many chances to get set up, to set up. But the other problem for this team is if you get set up on, there's nothing to bail you out. No, there's no wall that can paralyze the turn around. There's nothing. So he needs to be careful. He needs to set up before he gets set up on. That is how he's going to win games. With potentially, with honestly, potentially changing the lead. Like, if he would lead with, like, Volcarona against something that can't touch it and yep. start quiver dancing, that could be a, a legitimate strategy for him. So, Yeah. Look at Leeds coming back into play this late in the Generation yeah. 6. Yeah. Uh, Seth. Teenage Mutant Ninja Squirtles, who did not change their name this year. <laughs> T-M-N-S. Um, okay. So, first of all, Love, Gliscor, and Gastrodon together. Um, neither one of them particularly likes... Um, I, I mean, Grass annihilates Gastrodon. Gliscor doesn't like taking special Grass moves, but you, did, you, don't, you generally don't see that many... And he's um, got, you know, Heracross, Bisharp, and Chandelure to cover grass. Exactly. So I think I think that that core is really solid. And then mm-hmm. Chandelure puts out a ton of damage. Bisharp, Heracross, Sharpedo all have the damage to back up those tanks. So I think he's really balanced. Yeah, and I mean, keep in mind that should he run into a team that is very grass-heavy, he has a uh, Dragalge, who I think, you know, not going to care about grass at all. Right, Let's poison be honest. dragon. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Honestly, is there such a team? Is there is a grass heavy team really a thing? <laughs> I mean, if you're playing somebody like uh, the the Breloom's who or I don't remember who had Venusaur. Uh, yeah, yeah, um, the Breloom's. They had Venusaur. I mean, I could see him bringing Dragology against Venusaur. Yeah. Or, so I mean, I I think it, it's good to have the options. Chandelure, Bisharp. Uh, he doesn't have the fastest sweepers, but he's got some pretty strong sweepers. So yeah, and Bisharp, I mean, Bisharp prone, Bisharp and Heracross prone to fire, but he could bring in Chandelure, Gliscor, or or um, right. Astrodon to take any of that. Yeah. So I think it's a very balanced team. Um, he does have wall options, which is nice. Do blades in there should he ever decide to you know, go a little quirky. And I love Snorlax. Um, Same. But I mean, I I think he's got a good team there. I actually yeah. really like his team. So. We'll see how yeah, he does. Probably, probably one of the most balanced we've seen after, of all the ones we've reviewed so far. Oh, yeah. Uh, next up, we have our two competitors from the Game of the Week video. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we won't Which, uh, uh, yeah, too we much kinda, we kinda, play, Yeah, but... we kind of talked about them on the... Uh... Yeah. yeah let's, this, is a good time to, this is a good place to save time. If you want to find out what we think about Drew and Melissa's teams... Uh, I, I, will, I will note, this isn't giving away too much. But uh, Drew didn't use Quagsire in his game. But no. Quagsire is always scary because of Unaware. He doesn't care about people setting up on him. Yeah, that's a late always... pick for Quagsire, too. Yeah. Generally with yeah. people not drafting tanks. Right. So if he faces a team you know, that is very setup heavy, he's not going to have to worry too much. Right, exactly. If he faces Joe <laughs> and he brings Quagsire, you know, it's, it's pretty safe. His team so. is like like you could make an argument for for using any one of his ten guys. Yeah, I'll just put that in there. Like even Hitmon Lee, like oh yeah, Hitmon Lee hurts. Yeah. yeah, and that's why that's why he's been a 
blank time champion. Ever right. need and aside from that. Swallow, I mean, I mean, you could use Swallow, but I think like Swallow is very situational. I think the same could be said for Missy, though. I mean, I could bring you know see her bringing any of those ten people. I know yeah. Missy usually likes to stick to the same six, but you know I could see Spear Tomb coming out for Ludicolo or you know Weavile coming out for Swallow if their team has you know Mock Punch or something. You Jamie, know, I, mean, I know you, I know you like him, but did she take Chestnut early? Ah, uh, maybe. I mean, whenever you see some of the other options that were available, uh, she very well may have. I mean, let's see. That was the third. I mean, she could have had Starmie. Just, just look. Just look. Yeah. Just looking at some of the other walls. You know, she could have had Red Carrier. I mean, yes. Yeah, she. I mean, there's a lot. I guess Chestnut is a third round pick, but to be fair. She has one of the last picks, which is a wraparound, so you don't draft for a while. So she might have just seen a wall that she would be comfortable using, a wall that would complement Azumarill, who is her mm-hmm. big threat, and just said, you know what? I'm going to bite the bullet here. I'm just going to grab it. Yeah. Just make sure I have something that will block yep. Azumarill. Mm-hmm. Because yep. she, did, she didn't want to end up not having a wall. So, I mean, I can't fault her for that. Yep. And uh, once again, if you want to see... Uh, fuller discussions of their teams, go check out the Game of the Week post. Uh, Seth, uh, we know we know this Jeremy team already. We know Blissey, yeah. we know Starmie, we know Dragonite, we know Rhyperior. It's quite, um, Ian Mega will probably get like 20 kills because Jeremy's late round sweepers always work. It's actually quite he stole your Infernape. It's quite terrifying, this team, because Jeremy usually always had the core of, like, obviously, Bl- you, normally it was, like, Blissey and Mandibus. Mandibus, but So he basically just swapped out Mandibus for Slowbro, which is fine. Um, but his... I think in past seasons, his, his teams were good, but this team looks stellar because the offense is just terrifying. Like, Starmie, Dragonite, Infernape, even, like, a, even, like, even like Yon Mega or, like, Mega Mawile. Yeah, Mega Mawile is scary as shit, too. Like, I'll tell you what. Bomb's useful. Jeremy, who did you draft Ambipom specifically for? Me, I like Ambipom. No, I love yeah. Ambipom. You said someone's gonna kill, or Ambipom. Ambipom was gonna kill someone, like a specific Pokemon on a specific team. I forget who uh, it was. Huh. Whatever. Hmm. Uh, oh. Yeah, I don't remember. Um. Uh, yeah. See. Do so you remember? Is, no, I can. I don't want to look. Um, Seth, it's this team that makes me go, I need a redraft, because I don't know. <laughs> yeah, like, Jeremy, like Jeremy did this, and I don't know how I did Well, and, like, like Dragonite falling to four is okay. Like, Dra- Dragonite's value... That was the wraparound, too. Yeah, and Dragonite's value is very interesting, um, because a lot of people value him, like, really highly, but then some people think, like, oh, he's really easy to counter, you just bring, like, an ice move, it's whatever, um... But him falling to four is pretty a little surprising, um, but I mean, yeah, just really solid picks. Like Ambipom at eight. Looking at every, a lot of other people's like seventh and eighth picks, like I'm kind of surprised nobody picked up Ambipom earlier because Ambipom is just an, annoying. Like free damage with fake outs that do like forty percent health. Um, Frostlass. Yeah. Frost yeah, that's Jeremy. it. Yeah, I yeah. mean, it, it's just like yeah, it's sort of. It counters those leads that want to scarf on you. And it counters the lead of the person who against your cursed. Yeah. Like yeah. say like say say you say you battle that Scolopede, you you start Ambipom and fake out and then you kill him on the next move, like Yeah. There you go. Right. Because I mean Ambipom isn't a slouch when it comes to attacking. But let's move on to the Unova Jazz. Final round, Jeremy. What do you I like I do like the name. Unova Jazz. Yeah. Uh, it's, I mean it's this isn't this is this is a very yeah. Z-Money team. You have the Aerodactyl. You have Z-Money. Gardevoir. Halucha. <laughs> Flygon. So, I mean, you know... Classic, classic Psycho Con. It is. It is. I mean, Gligar is a pretty good wall. <laughs> he doesn't really have much in the way of special walls, but I don't think he cares. Not I mean, many... Not a special sweeper either besides Gardevoir. Right. Oh, but let's look, at the, let's look at the ninth overall pick, Empoleon. That's a great ninth overall pick. It's a good pick. Yeah. It's a really good ninth overall Empoleon pick. Empoleon can be a lead, can, uh, can set up, with like what agility? Agility and Polyon's actually kind of popular. Mm-hmm. No, he, he I, I, and Conkleder always going to be good. Oh, it's a great pick in number three. 
Yeah. Yep. Uh, Aerodactyl at number two. Eh. I don't know. I mean, I know he loves Aerodactyl, and it's good to see the Dactyl back. Um, the Dactyl. But that's sort of, I mean, Aerodactyl's good. I think he sort of lost some of his sheen because of a team preview. And I remember Aerodactyl lead was very scary. And um, now you can you can see Seth's Facebook page, apparently. Yep. Um. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> but um, <laughs> but um, <clears throat> no. So I mean, I think we're. I think, but yeah, I think it's time to wrap up this uh, podcast. Yeah. Uh, good draft, everybody. Uh, I mentioned this on the game of the week, but I'll mention it here as well. Uh, we're gonna change up the uh, ratios a little bit this season. We're gonna do uh, fewer podcasts in favor of more games of the week. Uh, because I like doing games of the week better, uh, so we'll it'll be me and Jeremy started this one. We'll mix it up. Seth will come in there, call some games, and we'll uh, we'll keep that fresh and and different. Uh, so if either of you have any closing arguments, uh, closing. Statement. I have none. I need to go take out the trash. Okay. Yeah, I'm good. I'm having uh, difficulties with a shelf in my fridge. All right. Uh, well, All good right. draft, everybody. Uh, for Jeremy and Seth, I'm Mike Mealy. Thanks for listening, and don't forget to play your games. Bye. Bye.